Hey guys! So, trying to break down poetry and uh, you know, looking at the theme of poems is really annoying and really difficult because you know sometimes it's just really hard to try and, and figure out what the poem is trying to tell you. Um, so here's uh, a quick little um, review on how to use things like imagery and symbols um, and pick those out of the poem to try and figure out what the theme actually is. Okay, so common themes in poetry. So a common theme is going to be something that you see across a lot of different poems. So some common ideas would be, you know, good versus evil, like in the Jabberwocky, the sun goes out and defeats this, you know, evil creature or, uh, you know, death, talking about death. Annabelle Lee, that whole thing is talking about how the, this woman that he loved died and how he's handling that. Um, you know, family, do not go gentle into that good night. Turns out by the end of the poem, he's talking to his father about how to deal with death. So the whole focus of that is building that you know, connection of family and relationship. You know, so these are different themes, um, you know, messages and ideas that the speaker is trying to get across to the reader in the audience, the person that um, is, you know, going to be observing the poem. So it helps to know what a theme is before you can actually find it. So a theme is the author's message or what they want you to take away from the poem, the what they want you to learn. It's usually some kind of life lesson. It's usually a broad idea, something that can be applied to several different situations instead of one specific one. Um, a common mistake in looking for themes is confusing it for the main idea. The main idea is going to be specific to that particular poem. So, you know, the main idea of do not go gentle into that good night would be um, trying to encourage his father to, you know, push against death and show passion even at the end. The theme of the poem would be um, family and grief because you know he's talking to his father and he's obviously very upset that last stanza you know we've talked about how you know it seems like he gets you know more desperate and pleading so family and grief is a general idea something that can be applied in multiple situations but the main idea of encouraging his father to continue to show passion even at the end of his life that's going to be particular to that one poem. It's not that idea is not going to be applicable to different situations. So the theme is the idea that can be used in several scenarios. The main idea is going to be unique to that one piece. Okay, so again, we're going to be focusing on uh, imagery, sound, and symbols and how that helps reveal what the theme of a poem is. Okay, so imagery, y'all have a good grasp on that. It's um, descriptive words that help you visualize something, that help you feel it, that help you smell it. It's going to uh, um, appeal to your five senses. So that's when they're going to be using figurative language like similes and metaphors to represent these ideas. You know, we have symbols. This is when an object represents something larger like a rose is a symbol of love like in beauty and the beast the thing that the witch gives the prince is a rose and he is you know to break the spell on him he is supposed to find someone who truly loves him otherwise this rose will die and his curse is permanent so the rose symbolizes love um you know a dove 
often represents peace or, you know, uh, a white dove, you know, purity, peace, um, you know, prosperity. It's an, an object that you can, you know, see, touch, whatever. It's an object that represents a much larger idea. Uh, sound, you know, read the poem out loud. You know, does it move fast? Like we real cool. Does it move slow? Is it broken up or choppy? How do the lines flow? How does the rhythm, the beat of the poem impact how it feels, how it sounds? Does that rhythm import, uh, support or go against the meaning the, the author is trying to convey? All right, put it all together. How do these things shape my understanding of the poem? All right, you know, the advice given is write the answer as a general statement that is true and not specific to the poem. So general means it can be applied in several other situations. All right, so we're going to practice this concept on a poem. It's called daffodils. So let's think about the imagery and symbols and how the poem sounds as it's read out loud. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high o'er vales and hills, when all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils. Beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. Continuous as the stars that shine and twinkle on the Milky Way, they stretched in never-ending line along the margin of a bay. Ten thousand saw I at a glance, tossing their heads in sprightly dance. The waves beside them danced, but they outdid the sparkling waves in glee. A poet could not but be gay in such a jocund company. I gazed and gazed, but little thought what wealth the show to me had brought. For oft, when on my couch I lie, in vacant or in pensive mood, they flash upon that inward eye, which is the bliss of solitude. And then my heart with pleasure fills and dances with the daffodils. Okay, so some of the images used in the poem, how, you know, what feelings did they give you? So some of those images would be, you know, the daffodils themselves. Um, you know, they're described as golden. You know, it's, you know, pretty, it's peaceful. You know, he starts off, I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats over uh, valleys and hills. So he's feeling lonely, he's feeling separated, he's just not in a good place, he's being, you know, he's stuck in his head, is, is basically what he's saying. And he's wandering around and he comes across this field of daffodils, it's a type of flower. So, you know, he's floating lonely as a cloud, he's high above everything, he's on his own. He comes across the golden daffodils. So they're bright, they're happy, they, um, you know, it's, he, he comes across them, it's fluttering and dancing in the breeze. He's personifying them. He doesn't feel lonely anymore because all of a sudden, you know, he feels like he's got, you know, he feels like he's not alone. He's got company. Um, Continuous as the stars that shine and twinkle on the Milky Way. So he's comparing them to, you know, space and how numerous they are. There's tons of stars in the sky. So he's saying that this field is so full of them. It's like looking at the night sky when there's not any lights and you can see thousands of stars. You know, they stretched in a never ending line along the margin of a bay. There's no end in sight. You know, he's looking out over this field and there's tons and tons and tons of them. You know, 
the waves beside them danced, but they outdid the sparkling waves in glee. So they're waving. It's, you know, it's slightly breezy. It's relaxing. You know, it's like watching the waves at the ocean. It's just, it's calming. It's peaceful. So he, the poem goes from this guy feeling lonely and, you know, all by himself to, you know, he's happy. He's at peace. You know, he says, for oft when on my couch I lie in vacant or in pensive mood. So when I'm lying on my couch and when I'm all up in my head and I'm just moody and thinking about life and all these things, this field of daffodils comes to mind and then I'm happy and I'm peaceful. And, you know, that essentially he's talking about like this place, you know, being like a happy place for him. So the daffodils become a symbol of happiness and peace for this, for this person, for this speaker. It's a symbol So the daffodils become a symbol of happiness. This, these particular flowers become uh, representative of the larger idea of happiness. Okay, so what lesson are you learning through this speaker's use of imagery in comparing his loneliness to clouds high above everything else and being separated. How are, you know, what message are you getting from the way the poem sounds when it is spoken out loud? What do you learn from, you know, the symbol of the flower, the symbol of, uh, that represents this happiness? So the, the lesson that is to be gained from this poem in the way that is written, the way that it sounds, is that human happiness can be tied with nature and finding peace in being outside and communing with uh, with nature. Um, as readers, we experience the speaker's uh, enjoyment from viewing this field, so it encourages us to also gain enjoyment from nature. 